It's Tuesday, March the 14th. City blows wide over website. This website. <laughs> Scientists clone pig. Results unveiled. <laughs> Pensioners demand power. Next, they'll want inside box. Please welcome Mr. Ian Lee. Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock show. What's got 22 legs and smells of wee? A post office queue. No. <laughs> no, no, don't, because you're being ageist. I say power to the old people. Do you know, there's even a grandparents' conference on this week. Fantastic. They're wearing name tags, of course. Helps them remember who they are. But... <laughs> Just the one of you there. Some say... <laughs> don't matter, I thought it was funny. Some say the Coffin Dodgers are already well represented. They even appear sometimes on Blind Date. But the answer they give are so lame. I've still got lead in my pencil, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we know what you mean. You're a fucking dirty perv, Grandad. <laughs> it shouldn't be allowed. I mean, how quickly do you lose a stiffy when they pop up on Blind Date? <laughs> Fellas, seriously? Huh? Come on, are you with me? Uh, I feel like Trisha there. Uh, but here's something strange. My cock actually gets harder when they come on. Not my fault, I'm just turned on by Blue Rinse Beaver. <laughs> Blame my parents, I don't know. But it's amazing that they're still at it, you know. I mean, what about Scotty from Star Trek? He's 80 years old and he's just become a dad. Think about it, when his son is 18 years old, Scotty will be... dead. But <laughs> honestly, I can't wait to get old. You can ignore people by pretending to be deaf, touch birds' asses without getting a slap, and cop a snog off a granny. As long <laughs> as you don't mind a mouthful of whiskers. <laughs> and that's just the cat food they eat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But enough of this oldie oratory, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Daisy Donovan. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Now, listen, everybody's trying to throw the gypsies out of the country, but come on, leave them alone. Think what gypsies do for us. They keep the lucky Heather business alive. And if we didn't have any Heather, I think it's safe to say Scotland would look rubbish and there'd be no point living there unless you were a scagged up jock. Daisy, <laughs> before you offend anyone else, please tell us what's coming up on tonight's show. Will do. Coming up, the news Avenger winds up clockwork radio inventor Trevor Bayliss. Former Liverpool lefty Derek Hatton joins us live. And as for Ian... I'll be finding out why men are suffering sexual discrimination more and more. Oh! <laughs> but now it's time for the headlines. Tonight's top stories. Seven soldiers from the Parachute Regiment face dismissal after failing drugs tests. Filmmakers have expressed interest in the story and have started working on the script provisionally titled Raving Private Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool striker Michael Owen has denied that his knee injury is more serious than first thought. <laughs> Vanessa Fells has been asked to pose nude for a centrefold. She admitted it wasn't the first time she thought of having her stomach stapled. <laughs> Following today's announcement that scientists have successfully cloned piglets, there were concerns that last week's cloned rhino may have been a hoax. <laughs> Hillary Clinton presented Mo Molan with an award for her work in the peace process. Bill Clinton also gave Mo something to help stick down her wig. <laughs> Hillary Clinton is also making news for taking on the mayor of New York in a political showdown. But how did she get bigger balls than her husband? Let's take a look at the events that made her a man. They say life begins at 40, but for Hillary Clinton, it began at naught. Born in 1947, no one knows anything about her early life, except she looked like Scooby-Doo's lesbian friend, Velma. <laughs> before blossoming in later life into a cross between Sharon Stone and Judy Finnegan. Her life changed forever when she married Bill Clinton in 1975. Five years later, daughter Chelsea was born. A bouncing baby... In 1992, the Clintons entered the White House. At the inauguration ball, Hillary was radiant, blind to the obvious omens of Bill's love of a good time blow. During a 1993 Christmas Day broadcast, she caused outrage by emulating her idol, Sharon Stone, appearing dressed as an emotionless corporate dyke with her pussy visible between her legs. It wasn't long before further cracks appeared in the Clinton marriage, namely those of Jennifer Flowers and Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> Hillary bravely decided to stand by her man, despite rising speculation over who else he might have fucked. <laughs> 
Now she wants to be the ruling mayor of New York instead of the ugly mayor of the White House. One thing's for sure, she'll need all the spunk she can gather for this fight. <laughs> Good luck, Hillary. And those were tonight's headlines. <laughs> The flotation of lastminute.com today caused a share-buying frenzy in the city. For more on the story, here's Paul Garner with his report. When I was growing up, losers like this were the only people using computers. But today's lucrative flotation of lastminute.com has given normal people a glimpse of some of the fortunes that can be made. In just a few hours this morning, internet entrepreneur Martha Lane Fox went from being a possibly if I'd had a few pints, to a, I definitely would, she's gorgeous, after banking £50 million from the flotation of lastminute.com. With millions to spend, Lane Fox now has to decide whether to invest it in her company or blow the lot by treating herself and two friends to a full English breakfast at a motorway service station. <laughs> With the success of lastminute.com, people are now rushing to invest in soon-to-be-floated internet businesses. These include lastminute.comy, a Russian service offering amazing late deals on Levi's, vodka and depleted uranium. <laughs> Analysts are also backing the flotation of RomanianSpongers.com, an East European site dedicated to fleecing British taxpayers in the comfort of their own homes. <laughs> Finally, there are big hopes for www.bankrupt.com, the site where city investors can declare themselves bankrupt online when they realise they've invested 300 grand of their money in a 14-year-old from Woking with a PC in his bedroom. <laughs> Internet share prices have soared as advances in technology promise greater access and interaction for net users. It won't be long before tickets for theatre and travel can be printed directly from your PC. Food and drinks will be ordered and downloaded online and fans of sex sites will be able to enjoy realistic virtual shagging. <laughs> or whatever else turns them on. <laughs> Despite the excitement that surrounds the internet boom, scientists have warned that excessive use of computers could affect human evolution, and today released a chilling image of man in the future, as a pasty-faced, overweight, short-sighted, short ass constantly tapping out shit on a keyboard. <laughs> this is Paul Garner, The 11 O'Clock Show, in a young boy's bedroom. Those legs and the stockings. <laughs> I, would, I would go for that. Legendary footballer George Best is in all our thoughts at the moment following his admission to hospital with a drink-related illness. They say he's a golden great, but he's not golden, he's just drunk himself yellow. <laughs> in his glory days, Best always exhibited great ball control. He once simultaneously brought two balls to a perfect halt on the chin of a Miss World contestant from Kettering. <laughs> Magic. Luckily, despite his illness, he's on the mend and will soon be drinking himself sick again. But some people still want to knock him, so we're giving away the punchlines to all George Best jokes now, thereby rendering them obsolete. George Best is a legend, not just in the world of football, but in the colourful tapestry of public life. Throughout his glittering career, this lovable hellraiser brought joy and pleasure to millions, despite battling his own personal demons. He's an idol who has been adored both for his finesse on the pitch and his lust for life off it. We wish George a speedy recovery and hope that he manages to overcome his present difficulties to entertain and inspire a future generation of sportsmen. George's skills will always be with us in such modern-day footballers as David Ginola. David Bexham. Stan Collie, more booze for me, please. <laughs> Eric Cantona, I'll have a pint of Ruddles. Les Ferdinand, a glass of white wine for the lady. And Michael Owen, whatever you're having. Finally, let's take a moment to show George the way we'll always remember him, lifting the cup. <laughs> and that was our tribute to George Best. Research says that men are now more likely to complain about sexual discrimination than women, which is odd because A, they're always asking for it, and B, they love it, really. But does this mean that men are the new women? Here's my special report. A report out today says that women are being given the best jobs in British industry. Is it because they make the best bosses, or simply because if they don't get their promotion, they'll storm off in a strop and refuse to have sex for a year? I've come here to London to find out. 
Should men and women have equal opportunities at work, do you think? Absolutely, yeah. I agree, yeah. Even the women? Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> do you think that women getting to the top in business is uh, a sign of sisters doing it for themselves? Uh, yeah, I think women who do get to the top certainly... Uh, It'd be nice to have a look at that, wouldn't it, now and then? Sisters doing it for themselves, I mean. It'd be nice to have a, catch a glimpse of that. <laughs> don't know. I've got some videos. A man was recently told he wasn't allowed a beer pump next to the water dispenser at work and successfully sued for discrimination, saying, I'm a man, I need beer. Is this justice gone mad? It is. Daft, yes. Would you ever consider having a, a pump in the office? No, no. <laughs> One woman boss forced a male employee to strip while she snorted cocaine off his cock. Is that sexual discrimination or is he simply lucky as fuck? He's a dirty <laughs> bastard. <laughs> what if you, as a man, asked to be given wanking time at work and your boss refused? Would you sue for discrimination? I am my own boss, so I can make up my own mind. Oh, really? So you, your own boss, you can, you can crap one off whenever and you know you won't get in trouble for it? Yeah. As a woman, um, do you like it when uh, the blokes, you know, fondle you, you at work? Uh, chances are you get a right hand out of me. Really? Yeah. They, they, you, you bring them up? <laughs> Sorry, I don't believe it's completely different. So there we have it. While it appears that women may be given the best jobs, I, for one, am going to stick to the job that I know best, being rude on the telly. Until next week's instalment of Filth, this has been Ian Lee, The 11 O'Clock Show, London. That's the end of part one. Still to come, Liverpool rogue Derek Hatton. And straight after the break, we've got classic footage of the man who had a big bang in a black hole. Don't miss it. <laughs> Nineteen fifty four and Big Bang Boffin Albert Einstein celebrates his seventy fifth birthday. He said energy equals MC squared. He was wrong. <laughs> energy equals AC DC. <laughs> Everybody knows that, you wonky haired twat. <laughs> Welcome back to the 11 o'clock show on the 14th of March, the birthday of Albert Einstein, the cleverest man in the world. Not that clever, he's dead. Coming up, the news Avenger interrogates inventor Trevor Bayliss, but first, it's time for a look at today's headlines. Europe retaliates in the chocolate wars, it's a case of kit for cat. <laughs> Government backs massive jumbo, Prescott says, oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Research claims taxi drivers are super intelligent. If that's true, why isn't Stephen Hawking a cabbie? <laughs> I'm not going south of the river, Governor. Just a bit cabinet weekends. <laughs> now, like garages, pubs will soon be open 24 hours a day. But unlike garages, you won't have to shout at some spotty div behind perspex for a pint of lager and then be given a fan belt. This change in the licensing laws means we'll now be more like our European counterparts, apart from the rat's tail haircuts and the need to drown puppies for kicks. So, how will your local boozer change? Well, landlords have been issued with this strict set of guidelines, the Publican's Charter. Here's what it says. With your pub now open 24 hours a day, you will encounter the incredibly drunk, so you'll need to develop a whole new way of communicating with them. We suggest Scottish. <laughs> Your pub may attract vagrants and the homeless who'll want to sit in the warm all night. Discourage this by changing your pub's name to the Tramp Abattoir. <laughs> Don't think that you need to spend a fortune on entertainment. Dedicated round-the-clock drinkers will happily stare for hours at the pub dog licking his balls near the jukebox. <laughs> Just because the pub is open all the time, it doesn't mean you can't refuse to serve a customer. As a rule, you know when they've had enough if they ask for change for the dialysis machine. <laughs> and that was our publican's charter. Time to tell you about tonight's guest. He's the Liverpool lefty who once ran the city straight into conflict with the establishment. He got on Thatcher's tits and up Kinnock's nose, yet emerged squeaky clean. He's gone from militant tendency to business consultancy. He's flash, he's brash, and he's currently talk of the town on radio. Please welcome Derek Hatton. <laughs> The firmest handshake I've ever met. Now, do you mind if we call you Degsy? Uh, call me what you like, as long as you don't call me late for me dinner. Hey! hey. We'll, call, we'll call you Daggers, then. Fine. That's our personal okay, favourite. OK, yeah, fine. Now, you were famous for your anti-establishment stance in the 80s. Is there anyone like you around today? Different world, in a very, very different world. I suppose the nearest is the likes of you two. 
Do you, mm. you think we're like you? No, I think what's happening now is that, what's happening now is the world has changed. So you don't get involved in politics; you get it on the media. Mm. And I think people like you present a whole new anti-establishment type operation, which is very, very different than you'd see on Newsnight. Yeah. And I suppose we were different in our day in politics. It's just changed. Now, you're famous for being a man of the people. We've got some questions from the people we'd like to ask you. Anyone got any questions here? Lady at the back, next to the, the, the bald rat-like man. I don't... Sorry. <laughs> Do you know, I feel sorry for him, actually. Uh, what, what question have you got for um, Derek? Should Frank Dobson listen to the Labour spin doctors and shave his beard off? Should Frank Dobson shave his beard off? Well, I think you've got to remember the thing about Frank Dobson. He's done very, very well for himself since he left Captain Bird's Eye, hasn't he? <laughs> you know, he has. He's other? done very, very well. <laughs> oh. he's, done ve he's always got to have that one, hasn't he? Uh, he's done very well. No, I mean, Frank Dobson's got as much chance of getting to be Lord Mayor as he has to becoming sort of the mayor in Dick Whittington at the London Palace. <laughs> I mean, the reality is he's not going to do it. Mm. I mean, Ken Livingston's going to win. Um, but once Ken Livingston gets in, he'll just be simply a hostage to fortune because you'll get all these Mickey Mouse groups that have supported him. He'll get in there, they'll all want their own demands, and one thing Blair will do, he'll take all the powers off him. I think there's a chap there with the glasses and the dodgy tie. Yes, sir, do you want to stand up and ask a question? It's been revealed that John Prescott not only has two jags, but he also has four houses. I mean, do you think that uh, politicians are only in it for themselves? Well, I think that people now are getting to the position where they'll just get whatever they can, and John Prescott is no different. I mean, anybody who can get in a car, go from there to there at a party conference, for his wife to have her hair done, and then you don't tell the difference afterwards, there's got to be something wrong with them as well, isn't there? He had a lot of pies in the boot, apparently, as well. A lot of pie, yeah. <laughs> Did you find it difficult to work after you got accused of corruption? Um, not... Yeah, initially it did. It's very, very difficult. On a serious note, it's very, very difficult mm. because although, you know, although you're not in, in anything in, in, in British society, you're not guilty until you prove so. Nonetheless, you know, throw enough shit and it stinks. <laughs> now, I think we've got time for one more quick question. Is anyone else? Yeah, the only person with their hand up in the front row there. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for No, not you. <laughs> uh, Tony Blair's going head to head with um, William Hague and Charles Kennedy in, in two TV debates. Uh, who'll come off best? William Hague will smash the two of them. Do you know something? A couple of months ago, I had, I had William Hague on the show, and I was amazed how bright he is. Forget whether you agree with him or not. It's it doesn't matter. It's shining, though, yeah, isn't it? With yeah, the polish. how bright he is, right? <laughs> and afterwards, after I talked to him, you might laugh at this, but if someone had said to me, who do you want to go and have a pint with, William Hague or Tony Blair, mm. I'd have gone and have a pint with William Hague. He's a far more human person on a one-to-one -one person, one-to-one -one basis. And you watch him in question time, he batters, doesn't he? He batters Tony oh, yeah, he's Blair. he's very clever. Uh, there goes, finally, some people say you never really represented the true spirit of Liverpool. We think we found some better candidates. Like you, they were big in the 80s, they're always ducking and diving, and many people say they epitomise that famous Scouse sense of humour. Let's have a look. It's the Boswells from Brad, ladies and gentlemen. That's <laughs> <laughs> Derek Hatton. Thank you. Thanks, 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 Thanks. Thanks. Certain rights and privileges we all take for granted to reflect on how they were achieved. Here's Ricky Gervais with his continuing series on key moments in 20th century social history. Tonight, African independence. Oh, shit. <laughs> the 60s and 70s saw Africa gradually gain independence. Britain alone, handling back eight countries from colonial rule. Independence meant working out their own systems of government, health services, educational systems. Also running their own armies and economies. They were on their own. Mm. We get a call in the early 80s. Hello, England. It's the President of Africa here. Is Harold Wilson or the Queen there, please? They're not in charge anymore. This is Thatcher. What do you want? Oh, can you help us? We're starving. Sorry, I thought you were independent. No, but it's the drought and the famine. Yeah, you should have thought of that before you went off on your own. Yeah, we didn't know it was never going to rain again, did we? It's awful. Awful? I'll give you awful. In the long, hot summer of 1976, Ken had a hosepipe ban. We were told to have a bath with a friend. Which I did, actually. I say a friend. It was more a friend of my granddad's. But ten quid's a lot to a kid in Reading. Anyway, all the Boomtown rats, they're not doing anything. What about all the fighting? Sort it out or we're sending Michael Caine again. Good lad, that's a... I didn't have to wash him. <laughs> now time for some news, Justin. Salman Rushdie has been talking about the stunning new love in his life. He said that she was not so much a companion and lover, more a human shield. 
<laughs> Long-term sufferers of PMT have welcomed the news there will soon be a cure for the condition, and they say they can't wait to tell their girlfriends. <laughs> Rogue ice cream vans are selling cigarettes to children as young as nine. Kids are being warned to stay away from Mr Wheezy vans. <laughs> George Best is set for a long stay in hospital after chronic liver failure, which turned him yellow. On the plus side, he's just been offered a part on The Simpsons. <laughs> When the pubs are to stay open 24 hours, Best has also said that he will limit his drinking by only going to the pub for last orders. <laughs> Three topless female hairdressers were arrested for offering sexual favours to male customers. They charged £10 for a trim, £20 for highlights and £100 to blow them dry. <laughs> and that was the news just in. Mm, mm. The clockwork radio has revolutionised communications in the third world, and its inventor, Trevor Bayliss, has single-handedly changed the lives of millions. That's good enough for most people, but not for our news Avenger. She's got to put her own spin on things. You are? Trevor Bayliss. And your day to remember was? The time when I showed my clockwork radio for the first time to Nelson Mandela. Do you want to talk about it? I'd love to. OK, let's talk. <laughs> Your low point was when everybody, including the Design Council, turned oh. down your clock radio. I know, radio idea, but Nobody what made you that. stalk the chairman of the Design Council shouting, video kill the radio star? <laughs> well, you see, you've got to understand. But why did you do that? I didn't say video kill the radio star in that sense. I always think it's quite good to have a phrase. So if I could say to you, I guess all you were hearing was radio gaga. Yeah. And you say, yeah, radio goo goo. Yeah. Can we try that? Just because I think it works. Well, I don't mind. Yeah, so I'll sure. Say, okay, so, Trevor, I guess all you were hearing from these people was Radio Gaga. Radio Goo Goo. I mean, quite frankly, <laughs> nobody should have to go through all that. Forgive the expression. Crap. If I was to say on your production line, a blind child with no arms and no legs made one of your... Com well, uh, let us not... No, no, no. Just, but just using the no, agility no. of its mouth. No, no, no. Let's not go OTT. Let's not go over the top. <laughs> You've got a human being there doing a normal production line job. But for us, you know, the more disabled, the better. You know, it's no, like no, no, no. Ask me a question and we'll go for it. And I'll explain the situation there for you so you understand it. OK, was important. there a blind child with no arms and no legs that made a part of your radio using the agility of its mouth alone? This I cannot confirm. Now, if... You cannot <laughs> deny, though. Well, I, I really don't know because I didn't see that child. That'd be, that'd be a bam and got him. Now, let's talk about the day you met Nelson Mandela. You were the first person to see him in jail. No, I didn't see him in jail. You did? No, I never saw him in jail. You did? You were the no. first person? No, 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 you see. To Whoever ever see him? No, 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 no. Hold on one second. Uh. You were one of the few people to have seen Nelson Mandela in jail. No. You don't have to be modest. <laughs> no, I didn't see him. Then. I don't know where you get this stuff from. I met Nelson Mandela at his place in Pretoria. But it would make a better story. If I you don't saw care. Him. I am not going to lie. I okay. know it would. This it would is not theatre. Story. I know it would. Look, but like, it is a bit of showmanship, look, isn't if, it? Uh, no, no, it isn't. It's a forty five. <laughs> Show. We leave you with disturbing evidence that today's racing at Cheltenham may have been nobbled by a Middle East betting syndicate. <laughs> and before we go, please, please take note of this important charity message. Good, Good night. night. Hello. Imagine a six-month-old baby. He's on crack cocaine, sharing needles, he can't hold down a job and has to steal to feed his habit. He's been steaming in Oxford Street, joyriding, and has made his girlfriend pregnant. A six-month-old baby. Sick, isn't it? You know, it needn't happen. Please, please send us some money now. Have a heart. A tiny baby. Come on, don't be a cunt.